familiar with the chord symbols. We've been using them quite a lot. Just an A for A major, a big G for capital G for G major, and so on. And uh, there's a type of shorthand that was being used in the Baroque time, which we'll have to become familiar with because it appears all the way around. It's called figured bass, and it's based on the same idea that just with one note you can actually show a complete chord, you can show the complete harmony. If necessary, we can add figures. But there are a few basic rules that you'll have to learn uh, in order to be able to get around this. Now the first is if no figure appears, the chord is simply the 5-3, the, uh, as we call it, the fifth and the third of the basic triad. Yeah? So this can either appear just as the basic note, and then that chord comes with it, or it can appear with a 5-3 if necessary, if there's been something say there's been something else before it, well the 5-3 might be written in extra, otherwise it'll just be left out. Then the next thing we need to know are the inversions of this chord. The first inversion will be obviously a B natural in the bass, and that just appears with a 6. The second inversion appears with a D in the bass, and appears with 6-4. Now nobody's saying what the position is of these right hand chords. We usually play chords with just three notes in the right hand and just one note in the left. The same applies on the second degree of the scale if we're in G major, except now this is A minor because there's no C sharp in G major, therefore this will be A minor. Then we have the same uh, inversions. The first inversion is a C in the bass with a six and the second inversion has an E in the bass with a 6-4. So you should now be able to play these chords on a piano or a keyboard, just using the bass notes with the figures that go with them. Here's the first, and here's the 5-3, and then the 6, and the 6-4. The second group is A minor. C in the bass and an E in the bass for the second inversion. So now we'll have to talk about seventh chords. The root position just appears with a seven. The first inversion looks more complicated because of course the intervals are now a six and a five. So this is six five. The third will usually be left out so you'll just see 6-5 for this chord. And then the second inversion will be, again, the fourth is important, the third is important. So you're probably going to see 4-3. The sixth will usually be left out, but it may appear as well. And finally, the third inversion has to have the 2, the 4, and the 6. Well, that's usually shortened to just the 2. So if you just see a 2, you know it's the third inversion of the 7th chord. In G major, I have an F sharp. So we shouldn't think that this is a dominant 7th chord. It's not like the chord symbols that just go for the most common type of chord. But this always relates to the key signature. So that in a chord with an A in the bass and a 7, that'll be the 7th chord, and these are the inversions, 6-5, 4-3, and 2. So again, this should be no problem now for you to play just from the bass line with its figures. Here's a 7th. Here's a 6-5, here's the 4-3, and here's the 2. The 7th and the A, the 6-5, the 4-3, and the 2. As I say, these are by far the most common, and I always used to encourage people when I was preparing them for examination in this subject, which was always a bit of a terror. 
usually because people uh, left it too late. It's actually not difficult to understand, but if you don't practice it, like everything else, it becomes really rather frightening if you have to do an examination in it. Um, there are a couple more very common chords, which it's also worth getting memorized. And once you have this basic equipment, if you can just recognize all the sevenths and the triads, and then a few of these weirdos, as I like to call them, these unusual chords that creep in, uh, if you can recognize those, the rest of them you can work out. It's always done with the same theory. The bass note in the key that is written with the key signature is taken with whatever intervals are written below or above this. The first of these unusual chords is written with a four. And if the four is there, it replaces the three. That's what's going to happen, but this is the suspension. We write this with the, with the chord symbols as G sus four. And it's just written with a four against the bass note in figured bass. The next common chord is suddenly we have G minor, which we weren't expecting. This is written very simply just with a flat sign beneath the G. And again, we weren't expecting A major, because the key signature would have expected an A minor, and therefore we write a sharp sign underneath the A. Now the next one is rather odd. It looks like the six has been crossed out, but it's actually, it means that instead of a normal six, which would be that, the six is raised, so we get this chord, which is going to be G-sharp diminished triad. And then this one is, because there's a flattened sixth above it, will be the third remains, and so it will be an, it'll be an augmented triad of E-flat. If we want a C minor chord, which is probably going to be more common, we should write the uh, six flattened and a four to go with that. Yeah? The next very common chord will be, if I now want to make a sort of dominant seventh with a G in the bass, well, I have to remember I have an F sharp, so I have to put the F natural in to add that. And the last of these is just, if I use no chord whatsoever, what I would write with NC, with the chord symbols, it just means I can double the octave, but there's nothing else there. When I write TS, which is actually short for Tasto Solo, yeah? Just one to go with those. So now it should be no problem to just play these from the bass line with their figures. This is 4 or 5 4. This is G minor. This is A major. This is G sharp to go on that, which makes it a G sharp diminished triad, and E flat to go on that, which means it's going to be an augmented triad. This is C minor in its second inversion, and this is the dominant seventh chord with a G in the bass, and finally TS, Tasto Solo, just the G's doubled. Here's a little exercise, tasto solo, and the 5-3 is added there because I now want the chord. Nobody's telling me what position of chord. This is going to be A minor, and this has got the sixth in there, so it's sort of F sharp diminished. This is going to be B minor. This is a first inversion of A minor. I can add a little passing note if I want to, but the position of the chord stays the same. A dominant seventh in third inversion, and a first inversion of G major. C minor, and 6-4 is the second inversion. 5-4, 3 is added just to show that that first four has been resolved. And here's a seven, nothing there because it's just a straight chord. Here's the seventh of A minor. And the same chord, but in a different inversion because now the bass note has changed. Nothing needed here because it's just D major as I would expect. The, the C has been raised, and so I need that little sharp addition, which is just a stroke through the sixth.
Now, if you're preparing an edition of a Baroque piece, it's enough to write this sort of basic chord. The player, depending on how many other people are playing and what the type of instrument he's doing and so on, may well do something more like this because he'll improvise around those chords that he's been giving. And so on. Improvisation is such an important part of Baroque style. Now, here's an example of this little Christmas carol, the Maria Durf und Dornwald King. I've taken the liberty of arranging this for a solo violin with string orchestra. And this is the type of thing you might expect the player, first of all, to see. That's the upper line of the solo violin part. And secondly, what he would then probably actually play in a performance might be something like this. <laughs> We've talked briefly about figured bass and about Baroque improvisation. This will be essential when we come to do orchestrating exercises and arranging exercises in the Baroque style because you always will have to allow for this. But that's all for today.